It wasn't terrible. Hello, people. It is Todd Shannon, data scientist, social commentator, and getter of buckets. And yes, that was Vivek Ramaswamy with bars. Hey, what can I say, man? The guy's versatile. You know, he's the businessman. Now he's running for president. You didn't know that your mans could rap. I'll tell you more about that later. But I was able to get that footage from the Iowa State Fair that took place this past weekend. And it's been going on all this last week. And there were presidential hopefuls on the scene. And I wanted to see them in person. So me and my family, we decided to go out there and see them uh, for ourselves. Vivek Ramaswamy was there, Nikki Haley, and also Ron DeSantis. We were hoping to see Donald Trump, but we did not get a chance to see him. But we nevertheless got some good information. And my main reason for going was that I hoped to actually get the chance to talk to Vivek Ramaswamy. And I actually got a chance to do that. I'll show you a little bit of that footage in a moment. But interestingly enough, Vivek Ramaswamy and I have something in common. Because you see, I also am a rapper, right? I, I I would like to think that I'm kind of, I'm a real rapper. I think he's kind of a pretend rapper, right? You know, he he's spitting, you know, Eminem lyrics. I, I write my own. Thank you very much. So, but anyway, I'm a musician. And as many of you may know, some time ago, when I did a video on Jason Aldean's Try That in a Small Town, uh, that video was very successful. And in just a couple of days, it actually went to about 40,000 views on YouTube. Now, YouTube, for some reason, decided that they didn't like something that I said, and they decided to throttle the video and restrict it from being seen by anyone under 18. But I think it was much more sinister than that, because since then, it's only got a couple hundred views when it had gotten nearly 40,000 in a day and a half. So they're not just restricting it from 18 year olds. They're basically saying no one should see this video. We're not going to take it down, but we're just not going to show it to anyone in anyone's feed. But you see, I decided not to take this lying down. You see, a few weeks ago, when they decided to throttle my video, I decided that I would do something different. And I would actually create another song that was effectively a remix of Jason Aldean's Try That in a Small Town because I wanted the message to get out there because I know it was resonating with so many people. And YouTube just robbed me of the opportunity to connect with people who share my values and who wanted to hear that message of unity. So... I decided to create a short, a little 60 second remix of Jason Aldean's song. And so I want to play it for you now. Here it is. Good luck. Try that in a small town. If you came to Luton Riot, you should calm down. I would not suggest you try that in a small town. Emotional manipulation, how it's calibrated. All that racial tension, bro, that stuff is fabricated. Yeah, it's a scam and you know it's true. With these lies, they're controlling you just to keep you voting blue. If you're getting mad, then that probably means you're culpable. But every now and then, yeah, that's what the truth's supposed to do. Let that liberty resound when the truth is ringing out. Hear the freedom in the sound. You too, big tech, they just want to keep us bound. It's too bad they could never keep us down. Seems to me if I was pushing debauchery, they would not be stopping me. But if I get political, now they're going to be critical. Christian and conservative, speaking for us all now. Repping Christ from the big city. Rep the Christ from the big city to the small town, yeah. So, you see the video. I hope you like it. Um, there's a very strategic reason why I cre decided to create this song because what I noticed is that even though sometimes they throttle people's videos for certain ideas and viewpoints that they don't like, they almost never do that if it's in song form. And so this is just me trying to figure out another way to get that message out and to reach people who have the sort of ideas and values that you and I, I'm sure, share, or many of you who are watching actually share. 
Now, I want to show you the extent of this, of this information here. Because if you go to my channel and you scroll on my page, you'll see that this video, Jason Aldean, tried that in a small town. They think it's so inappropriate that they've decided to block the thumbnail. And, <laughs> and like it's some obscene uh, content. It's actually quite fascinating, right? But if you go to my shorts, you'll see that this video now has almost 135,000 views. And even though it's only a 60 second video, I think that that's actually quite an admirable, admirable uh, achievement to get something this simple up to 135 views with me, who is really such a small channel and has such a small reach. This is actually quite remarkable. So the reason why this is so important is because I am going to need your help, right? This is a, this is a way that we can actually beat them at their own game and make sure that our message gets out there, even though they try to stop it. The same thing happened with Jason Aldean. Whenever they tried to say the music was racist, it was wrong, it was bad, they actually amplified it, and it became bigger, a much bigger song than it ever would have been had they not tried to interfere or not tried to talk it down or tried to say something was wrong with it. Whenever, whenever anyone went to actually listen to it, they were flabbergasted, that is, if they were fair-minded, at as to what people were talking about when they're saying this is racist or inappropriate. There was obviously no racist content there. And the same thing is true with how they blocked my video. There's nothing wrong with what I said in that video. Of course, YouTube wouldn't even tell me specifically what I actually said wrong. Nevertheless, they decided to do that. And this is what makes this so frustrating, is that a small creator like me, who has the opportunity to gain some momentum with his channel and to get out a message that he's passionate about and that many people on the, on the internet and in the YouTube community are also passionate about. And here they go and squash the whole momentum of the video and stop me from connecting to people who share my ideas and values. And this is the reason why I wanted to actually talk to Vivek Ramaswamy. And there is a musical intersection that actually trans transpired that's actually really important to this issue. But first, I want to show you what I actually asked Vivek Ramaswamy, and then I'll show you his response in a moment. I asked Vivek Ramaswamy about Section 230. And Section 230 is essentially a statute that grants common carriers immunity for bad things done by people who they provide services to. The problem is, is that Section C30 or Section 230 extends these protections to people like Facebook and Google and YouTube. And although it extends these uh, protections to them, it, there's one fundamental difference between them and the internet service providers and the telephone carriers that enjoyed these protections before, which is that Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and whoever else, they can actually shut down your service and block your account and do all types of things to you and remove your actual messaging when AT&T can't stop me from making a call, nor can any internet service provider stop me from putting up a website. I am at the point now where I am at zero tolerance. I have zero, zero interest in actually basically considering any presidential candidate who doesn't understand the importance of this issue. I'll show you what he said right now. About Section 230, Big Tech is out of control. Section 230 C2, go away, is the answer. Yes. You can actually make it an opt-in statute. If you want the protections, you gotta abide by the First Amendment. That's the answer. Thank you so much. Oh, good to see you. So there you see Vivek's answer. And um, although you see that I really couldn't get an in-depth answer, I was hoping that I would be able to, you know, uh, corner him and maybe grab 30 seconds and, and talk to him a little, in a little bit more detail about it. But uh, you can see it was a crowd of people. I wasn't able to get to him. I wasn't able to corner him. So I just yelled my question out from the crowd. I was close enough to where he was in earshot. But interestingly enough, Vivek's answer to me was, was at least the appropriate one given the circumstances. He wants to abolish Section, T, Section 230 protections for big tech, or else they have to either, if they want to maintain uh, Section 230 protections, then they have to abide by First Amendment st standards, which is to say they cannot engage in viewpoint discrimination, they cannot put people's content down or throttle or put their thumb on the scale when it comes to ideas 
and, and positions that they don't like, whether it's from COVID vaccines, ideas on transgenderism or homosexuality or any sort of ethical issue that they hold sacred, but that we do not, they cannot simply throttle our content because they do not share our values. And this to me is the biggest issue, one of the biggest social issues facing us today. This is where I'm gonna need all of my subscribers and anyone watching this video to chip in because I wanna get this to a million views, this one video, not because it promotes me, not because it amplifies me, but because this message is something that they tried to squash. They tried to squash the ideas and they tried to stop a black person who was saying, I didn't find anything wrong with this. This is something that unifies us. These are values that are valid. They tried to stop it. But now, even though it was a goal, my only goal was to get it to 100,000 views. It's over 135,000 now. And I actually think we can get it to a million, but I need everyone's help. So if you go to my YouTube channel, go to my shorts, find this video, watch it. It only takes 60, 60 seconds. Post it on your social media, share it on your Twitter, share it everywhere you can, get your family members to watch it. I can tell you that there's a great deal of people who are over 50, uh, <laughs> quite frankly, people from rural, uh, rural country, white people who don't generally listen to rap music, older people who don't generally listen to rap music. And all of them are saying, or many of them are saying, you know what, I don't really listen to rap, but I really like this. And this is a great message. And so let's get this thing to 1 million views. And the whole idea of being, as Jesus says, being wise as serpents, but as harmless as doves, is to find ways around the sort of things that when you know that there's, there's nefarious intent or when you know that there are not equal scales, equal weights and measures being used to judge you, that you find a way around it. And that's what I'm all about. I'm all about presidential candidates and future GOP candidates saying, hey, we want to take Section 230C2, and we're going to re revert that. We're going to take away these protections from big tech so that they're held liable. The truth of the matter is, friends, even if we get that done, they're going to try to find ways, find ways to get around it. And so this is a constant cat and mouse game. It's a constant game of who can out outwit who and who can out clever who and who has the will, the grit and the determination to make sure that they are not silenced. You and I, friends, we cannot be silent. We should never be silent. And so I'm calling on you to help me get this message out. Let's get this to a million views. I need your help. Would you like, share, subscribe? If you disagree with me, hey, let me know in the comments, and uh, I'll be happy to entertain what you have to say. But until next time, friends, let's get this thing to a million views, and God bless you.